have all this content ready for a gallery show that was happening in April or March. So we were pretty much shooting um, every day. And this was January. So we're talking about like below zero degrees, um, freezing. And of course, all I had on was my overcoat and a pair of heels. And we would be running to all different kinds of outdoor interesting areas, um, looking for like construction sites, or this one here was um, an old factory. Um, and no, at, awesome. at some point, at some point, the photographer would say, it's go time. And I would just throw off the trench coat and be butt naked and just start posing. And of course it was five o'clock in the morning. So I was most likely still hung over from the fetish party from the night before. And um, it, was, it was crazy. We did this uh, at least a dozen times before we had enough content for a gallery show, but um, it came out really nice. I love the graffiti too. Yeah. I'm a, a come up from, I love the movie Star Wars and graffiti, it, it, New York City and the culture. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, what am I doing babbling? We are here. We are enchanted by goddess Narcissa from New York. It is an absolute honor to talk with you. We're going to talk about modeling. We're going to talk about um, an all Asian dungeon. Yes. We're going to have, have a fun. We're live from Mischief Manor. Huge thank you to Mistress Shari. Mischief Matters. What a magnificent, what a magnificent world you created here. <laughs> I love it. It's well, a blueprint you. for what's the King community. So, Goddess Narcissa, please tell me what's inspiring you these days. Um, these days, I would say uh, the community. I'm definitely a lot more connected with the community. I've been in the lifestyle for over 15 years, and um, for me now, it's about giving back, about um, connecting with people, uh, people who have been in the scene for uh, a decade or more, or even those who are just starting out for the first time, um, and just being able to help create a more comfortable journey for people because there are a lot of obstacles. There's tons of things that um, are considered very dangerous, of course, we choose this lifestyle because of the edge play. Um, but if you don't find your edge play safely, uh, you can get yourself into a lot of trouble. So um, for me, the community is uh, what I'd like to give back to right now. Thank you very much. But one thing I definitely want to talk about is whips. Yes. Whips. 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 Um, single tail whips are my thing. Um, I think I learned it when I was in the dungeons and I actually learned not necessarily as a pro dom, but I was a pro switch, which meant there were some hours where I was on the receiving end. And then there were other hours when I was on the giving end. And through that exchange, I really fell in love with the sensation, the crack. Um, we're talking about something that's breaking the sound barrier that's going over 770 miles per hour. Um, so it is frightening. A lot of people think of it in terms of, wow, it's like that Indiana Jones, you know, exciting throwing and, or Catwoman and being able to be a badass. And um, for me, it, it was all of that. And I just started practicing and I started going to classes. Um, during my time off, I would find myself in one of the uh, session rooms uh, practicing. In fact, I would hang all these dildos on this rack that we had in the wall. And I would just try to make sure that I was able to hit each one of them and make them kind of spin just a little bit, um, just each one. And um, I, I loved it so much that um, I started collecting a lot of whips. One of my favorite whip makers uh, stopped making them. And um, after, I guess, about 10, 12 years, I realized that it it's such a perfect thing to have, yeah. whether you're starting out or if you actually have uh, some whip skills already, that I actually took it apart and decided that I was going to make something very similar because there are parts of it that are really great, the components, it's 
made of uh, paracord, so it's washable. And then I kind of added a little more weight and a little more stiffness, and I came out with uh, Mercy Whips. And it just so happens that this month, uh, Mercy Whips is five years old. And um, I sell them at Purple Passion. Um, a lot of other WIT teachers actually buy them in bulk for uh, teaching their classes, which um, I'm super grateful about. Please oh, show. How can we get these whips? Uh, you can you can order them from me, which I prefer you not. <laughs> I, would prefer, I would prefer you go to the store. <laughs> Yeah, go how to the store. How do I say this? Properly. I am not very good with customer service. I kind of feel like, you know, it's it's like I, I like making things and I like making things for you, but I have such bad communication issues. Um, now I'm thinking of a, so, a customer service like desk, like a whole customer service, dominatrix customer service. Absolutely. It's DSRs. I, yes. I, should, so we, we're in the, yes. We're going to start a business now. <laughs> I, I I knew that because I think it would be so helpful if I if I had some sort of mediator to help me with um, all of the different questions and also you know in terms of the whip length and everything, uh, which I mean I'd love to answer those questions, but then again it's like um, if I'm answering your questions and I'm not making your whip, so you kind of want to leave me to making your whip and perhaps I'm yeah I should get some customer service yeah questions you get You're some right. stubs. Yes. Very, very polite subs. Yes. Hello. If you don't buy this whip, I'm in trouble. <laughs> you know, like, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> it's all the selling. Um, okay. Slan, Stan Vladimir has a question. Stan, good friend of the show, does all the artwork. Stan, when it comes to whips, have you had accidents where you've broken something or which – or and which is your favorite whip design? So let's first part of the question. Uh, have I broken anything? Yeah. Um, nothing of like real value. I mean, I've definitely destroyed some really nice curtains. Uh, some, some feelings. Uh, yeah, um, actually, some lampshades. I've pretty much destroyed. I try and hang uh, targets so that I'm not trying to destroy my furniture. Um, I would say the thing that the accident that is usually most painful to me is when I hit somebody by accident uh, where I don't want to hit them, like in the ear or, you know, too close to their face. Um, and usually that that was towards the beginning of my journey. Um, and at that point, you don't want to freak out um, when you do whips, when, when you're throwing whips and you're playing with someone, when you hit them where you're not supposed to hit them, it's okay. You, you stop, you play, you, you go to your bottom and you say, I hit you in a place that was completely unintentional. I apologize. It is now up to you to decide whether you want to continue or if we should stop the scene. Um, I take it very seriously when I harm someone. I mean, I, I enjoy hurting people, but harming someone is totally different. Um, Do people say things when you're whipping them? You know, like... Like out of nowhere, like ah, 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 I cheated on my taxes, or, or <laughs> like I gotta call my mom, or somewhere, or um, like, just something out of the blue. People, it's funny. Oh, I don't cheat on my taxes, and I call my mom all the time. <laughs> all the time. Some some people have what what I would consider the, almost like Tourette's. They they start cursing, like they start cursing like a truck driver, and yet they'll let me know that they don't mean it towards me. They just enjoy it so yeah, much yeah. that they have to just say every single you know cuss word possible um and it's endearing because that means um, i'm doing my job right yeah oh yeah. <laughs> um and then the other part of your question um my favorite whip design um i tend to prefer the snake whips over the bull whips because um my intention is is to use it on a person as opposed to just like a uh, a cracking sport. So um, if you are more interested in, in using it for play and for accuracy and target, um, I would pref I would suggest the snake whip over the bull whips. The bull whips do fantastic cracks and you can do all kinds of tricks with it um, if, if that's what you're interested in. Why single tail whips as opposed to other whips? 
as opposed to like floggers yes. or cat and nines. Um, it's, you know what, it's, it's the coolest thing because you can, you can like go to a party and see all different kinds of play scenes happening. Uh, maybe a spanking scene where the people are really close to each other. Mm -hmm. Um, or even like a, a rope scene and they're doing a lot of tying with the whip. You have to be at least five feet away from your target, your person. And what you're creating with all of your throws is you're, you're creating a sonic boom. So again, that's going 770 miles per hour. You're breaking the sound barrier and you're creating this crack. What I've realized is that once I start that first crack, everyone comes to watch and what you've created is not only just a scene between you and your your whip bottom but you're creating actually a scene for a lot of the voyeurs so the energy actually encompasses a wider range and being such a narcissist um i love all of that attention so we're talking about creating this energy from six feet away everyone's watching so you're building this tremendous amount of energy and it's like, wow, you know what? Is there anything else more amazing? Of course, I'm a little biased. I feel like you can't necessarily do that in a spanking scene because you're up close and there's literally this much distance between the butt and the hand. Um, so it's not creating as much energy as you would with a single tail whip. Now, uh, we we're, were, we're, were talking about dinner. At, at dinner, we were talking about um, you're pretty much of a badass when it comes to the whip that people are kind of scared of you. Um, rightfully so, but it's, you know, it's, it's worth it's, it. It's, <laughs> it's, actually, I mean, so how is it, how do you find, how do you find a bottom, a whip bottom? It's so difficult to find a bottom. And I kind of, um, I kind of dislike the reputation because then it, it kind of makes people who are curious um, run away from me. I, I don't necessarily get people who approach me. And in fact, that's something that my mentees have told me um, in the past is that people are intimidated by you. You know, they'll actually go to my mentees and say, I really want to approach her, but I'm really scared. And so they'll end up approaching my mentees. And then of course my mentees come to me and be like, someone really wants to approach you. I'm like, well then bring them on. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like, I, I, I'm not going to bite. And, um, I feel like a lot of people are afraid to approach me, but I'm actually a really nice person. Um, my whip makes a lot of noise. I guess I'm kind of like a, a, a Jack Russell. I, there's a lot of barking going on, but I'm just a small dog. <laughs> but we're going to talk about, so how do you kind of gauge how hard to hit with you got to know the person, right? So mm -hmm. how do you make that distinction? Like what are some telltale signs? Um, well, I, I definitely start out, at zero or even a negative one, just so that they can hear the crack sound. They don't even feel any contact yet. Um, and even just the idea that you're standing in front of a cross and your face is away from me and you hear this crack sound, the endorphins are already going. So the person's sensitivity is already heightened. So even before they even make contact, they're already like all revved up. Um, and, and hypersensitive. So you do want to start slow and you do want to start at like a one um, and constantly check in, you know, ask them for their range. You know, what, what did that feel like to you? Was that a one for you? Because, you know, to me, I think I would love to bring everyone to a 10, but um, that that's not necessarily where everyone can go. And actually, I would suggest that you kind of stay within the one through five range um, out of 10 to begin with so that you can get an idea of um, what they like, because it might not even be the sensation as much as the idea of hearing the crack. Um, so there's, there's a different variety of reasons why people enjoy the single tail whip. Um, I also do wrap arounds um, where you can actually wrap the, the whole whip around somebody, or you can, um, you know, just lightly brush them with the, the, uh, the cracker of the whip. So, <laughs> And of course, we got a lot of um, comments, you know, stuff like that. Um, yeah. You having a company that sells whips. So tell us what it's like. What is it like having a company? It's an independent company. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's specifically whips in the BDSM community. Um, 
there's challenges, there's misconceptions, there's a whole, it's a whole world. Yeah. Right? It's, it's a, yeah. And I didn't, like? um, when I started Mercy Whips, I, I didn't necessarily want it to be popular. Um, I just wanted it to be affordable. Um, when I went to uh, Hilton at Purple Passion, I told him in the beginning, I was like, I don't want you to sell them for more than a hundred dollars because I want everyone to be able to, to have one and practice with it. Because the worst thing is when you enter the lifestyle and, you're, and you see tons of different kinds of toys, like the ones behind me, super expensive, and you don't even know who you are yet. You don't even know if flogging is your thing. You don't know if dragon tails is your thing. And then all of a sudden you see a single tail whip that's like $400, you know, beautiful leather, amazing but you don't know how to use it yet. So how do you go from spending $400 investing in something like that, not even knowing if this is your thing? So the reason why I came up with Mercy Whips is because, you know what, here's something affordable and it works really well. Use it. It's kind of like, you know what, go, if, if you're a first time driver, you're not going to buy a Ferrari, you know, go ahead and buy the, no offense. <laughs> <laughs> a Toyota. <laughs> Buy yourself a Toyota. It works. A solid it, car. <laughs> a solid car. Um, it's not a Ferrari, but use it. Uh, use it to death. Beat it up. Um, get get the most out of it. And then once you decide that you have the skills and this is your thing, go ahead and invest in one of the the, the Maserati whips there. Now, with uh, when it comes to whips, I love movies. I can't. I never shut up about movies. When it comes to whips, Russ Meyer has a slew of exploitation movies that whips in it. Now, is there anything in any kind of film that you could think of that stood out, or anyone here in a, a movie with a whip that really like stood out? Yeah, well, every Indiana every Jones. time. Okay, Indiana Jones. Same Indiana one. Jones. Yep. Every time I see a movie and, and there's a whip, here? I'm like, oh, there's a whip, there's a whip, you know, and I get excited, and of course, then I realize i'm like they're not using it right <laughs> they're not holding it correctly <laughs> so um it's it's kind of like you know that whole thing with um you know social media and mm -hmm. also the way it's portrayed in movies and stuff um you know the idea that like uh, let's let's try and be more realistic about you know how it's supposed to be thrown um when, and what it can actually do you know is it really going to you know swing around ricochet and pick up that whatever bottle of coke and flip the lid open no it can't do that i know it did that in the movie but it's not going to happen in real life it's not going to happen what is the absolute worst worst place to hit someone with a whip in the eye in the eye yeah i would definitely say the I eye um i do enjoy hitting the balls and the cock that's a quote right there <laughs> um, <laughs> i did like no. what i do try <laughs> what i do enjoy is actually hanging um, I have a clothespin and I'll hang um, bells or something. And then I can actually uh, clip that onto either their like jock strap or, or their underwear, the top part. So then the bells hang right just in front of their genitals. Mm -hmm. And then just, just kind of hit the bells, just make the bells ring. And, um, and then of course that gets boring because then, you don't want to be accurate anymore. You, you, <laughs> yeah. you, you kind of want to miss every now and then because, yeah. you know, that's that's even more fun. <laughs> Definitely. So let's talk about, uh, did this whole world kind of come together with modeling, so to speak, or was it the kink first? As uh, you were before, you, you lived a whole different life. Yeah. And you know what? It's it's interesting because I didn't, I didn't know how to enter the lifestyle. I just assumed that, you know, if you want to be in the lifestyle, you learn the skills. So I, um, I looked up, I mean, this was when I was completely vanilla. Um, I was working as a line cook at a French restaurant, uh, newly divorced and just totally trying to get my groove back. And I walked into a, an all Asian dungeon and I told the headmistress, I have no experience, but I want to learn all the skills. So of course she asked me, well, are you, are you a, a dom or a, a dominant or a submissive? And I said, I don't know, but I'll do both because I need to learn everything. Um, and that's kind of um, part of the, my friend kind of called it my motto is that um, 
when Narcissa does something, she she does it until she gets to the marrow. So, of course, I need to do something. When I need to do something, I need to do all of it. So I ended up being a pro switch. So there was there would be like an hour session where I would be getting caned, and then the next hour I would be caning someone else. So in terms of my learning curve, it just kept shooting up, and that's actually something that um is really important to me is the uh, bottom led learning. So understanding oh, yeah. um, from a submissive's perspective and learning through the, the submissive's perspective is really important. But um, so, so that's what I was doing. I was immersed in all of that, trying to learn everything um, in this kind of pro dungeon environment that had nothing to do with the lifestyle, but I didn't know that. All I knew was that my headmistress would come, she came to me one day because it was mandatory that all of the pro doms go see the uh, plastic surgeon. So I was, I was like, okay, I'll go see it. You know, after all the nagging, I finally went to see plastic sur the, the dom dungeon uh, plastic surgeon. And I had to try on all these fake boobs to see which ones I wanted. And of course, at that time, I hadn't totally given up on, on cooking yet. So I didn't want gigantic boobs. So I ended up picking something what I considered reasonable. And I brought the estimate back to the dungeon and I showed it to my uh, headmistress. And she took the paper and she just threw it back at me. And she said, this is ridiculous. Why would you want this? And I said, because they're practical. And she said to me, which I, when I do write a book, I'm actually gonna add the quote, no Asian goes hungry with boobs. <laughs> And that's when I realized that, hey, you know what? I don't know if I belong here um, because I don't want gigantic, you know, triple, what is it? Z Double D. Z uh, <laughs> boobs. They don't have uh, letters in the alphabet for that. Right. And it, it just not only did it not go with my aesthetic, but it also was kind of hypocritical because the week before she had given me crap because um, my friend had gotten us a trip to Fire Island. It was summertime. Oh, so we wow. were so excited. And so I went to the beach um, every day and I had a great time with um, my my restaurant friends. And uh, I came back and I was a beautiful golden, golden tanned person. And I got crap for that because I ruined my aesthetic because I know I no longer look like a porcelain asian skinned dominatrix so again it was all of this kind of image that was being created that um i didn't want to portray i just i just wanted to be a lifestyler and it was really difficult to understand that um going to a, a pro dungeon was not the place for me to learn how to be a lifestyler uh, and you are a lifestyle oh. I, um, I I would say I'm more lifestyle. Um, I understand and respect the the pro side. In mm -hmm. fact, I still do pro on the side. But the idea is that um, you understand the lifestyle first yeah. before you can understand the pro side, or, or else it just becomes purely a transactional uh, relationship. Definitely. What was the the fetish that kind of brought you into it. I mean, was it, it was it whips specifically, or was it something else? Was it the urge to be submissive, or the urge to be dominant? Or for me, I like, I love Fetdom, and I have a, I have a fetish for lingerie. So I see, I see a woman lingerie. I'm yeah. I, you know. It's, yeah. Your thing is lingerie. My yeah. thing is latex. It's, oh. Okay. Uh, it's a really, it's a really dangerous habit to have latex. <laughs> Uh, yeah. It's extremely expensive, yeah, right. but it's such an amazing feeling to have this tight rubber on your body. I don't know how else to explain it, but, um, and then you get to put all this like silicone lube on top of it. So you're all shiny. And um, it's, it's definitely one of the things that I'm most attracted to. And also when I started doing the, uh, the fetish modeling, you know, that was the thing, you know, you, you wanted to get to do the photo shoots where you got to wear latex and um, and look all shiny and stuff. Um, but I ended up doing a lot of different kinds of uh, fetish oh. modeling. 
That's what I wanted to talk about. It's a good segue. You beat me to it, which is great. I love beating. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> so, all right, the, let's talk about the power of the photograph. All right. Um, yes. I love photo photography. My father is a photographer. In, these images basically pretty much led the viewer here. You know, they saw an image of you. They see, oh, you're beautiful. Oh, or they know you. Is that So an image goes a long way, and it can be interpreted in many ways. Absolutely. So you take a picture, you're in a certain headspace, and then it's interpreted, and it means something to somebody else. Are there any incidences of that? Um, it, well, it it meant a lot to me. In fact, that's kind of where my my scene name originated from. Was actually, I was actually... Um, named by a photographer because he realized that I so much loved seeing an image or a reflection of myself through the photos. So that's kind of, you know, the whole uh, Greek myth about how the, the god Narcissus yeah. saw his own reflection. He fell in love with his own reflection in the pond. Um, and then he was immortalized that way as a flower. So there's a flower that's called Narcissus that actually leans forward like this. Um, so it was because of the fact that I enjoyed being photographed and looking at the photographs and the connection I had with the photographer, uh, enjoying capturing that, that uh, also my, my Gmail is Narcissa Captured <laughs> at Gmail. So they all kind of go together. Um, the whole idea that we're creating things that um, a voyeur can enjoy. Some of those things, evolved into uh, so what I ended up doing was I ended up putting myself out there and a lot of different types of genres came towards me and of course being who I am I had to try all of them um, so whether it was uh, doing damsel in distress or uh, bondage or uh, latex fashion um, I, I tried all of them and I would say that some of the more exciting ones I've done is like going upstate for a couple of days just to do uh, bondage shoots. And uh, yeah, we're talking about like seven, eight hours of uh, suspension. We went over to a river, a stream one day in the summer and uh, I was dressed up in a kimono and then I was tied up in a chest harness uh, with my arms behind me. And then I was thrown into the, the stream. And of course, the, the photographer and the the rope artist were just like, don't worry, you're going to be okay. There's a spotter downstream in case you end up floating downstream. There's going to be a spotter there to catch you. And all this time, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm an absolutely terrible swimmer. Um, so I really hope I survive this because the photos are going to be amazing. So, uh, it was terrifying, but that was that was part of the fun, was the, the terror. Oh, yeah. That's what's great about the King community, because, A, it's always unexpected. Yeah. Right? And it, I think the King community, BDSM, has helped me kind of not train my fear, but face my fear in certain ways. I, was, I had a liver transplant. I was dying. And now, like... It helped me deal with the medical fetish issue, like you know, dealing with medical yeah. fetish. Like, yeah. oh, okay, I have to be submissive to you, nurse, <laughs> like, <laughs> or I don't get fed, or I don't get eaten. <laughs> so That's right. it it has helped. So, but it does get dangerous and scary. You were telling me a story at dinner mm -hmm. that um, in about Newark, Newark, New Jersey, Brick City. Uh, oh, my hometown. Well, not my hometown, yeah. but my stomping ground. Yeah. Oh, my history. That was yeah. I was. <laughs> I couldn't, Shout out to the artifacts. Yeah, I, I couldn't work for, I had to cancel a lot of photo shoots for at least a month, if not two months, um, because it was uh, summertime and we were throwing a birthday party, a, a kinky birthday party in Newark at a strip club for one of our friends. And um, so at the end of the night, of course, we were the last ones to leave because we were throwing the party. And... Um, so we're the last ones going into the parking lot and getting into the car. And as soon as we pull out of the driveway and onto the street, um, a car came and cut right in front of us. And two guys came out, um, to my one to my side and one to the driver's side with guns and said, you know, give me your money or I'll shoot you. And of course, I'm just wearing a latex dress and my coat. 
I don't have anything on me. Um, the driver, of course, you know, he gave his cash and his phone and that was it. And so the guy on my side with his gun in my face decides to pistol whip me and say, give me your money or I will shoot you. And I told him again, I don't have any money on me. I don't even have a wallet or a purse on me. And so he pistol whipped my other, my other cheek. And at that point, I'm thinking, wow, I am not going to be able to work. And of course, I'm getting out of the car at this point because after spending a night at a party where I'm whipping a lot of people, I am in tremendous amount of top space um, thinking to myself, you know what? I need to teach this guy a lesson. And so I get out of the car and I tell this guy and I open up my coat and I say, I'm showing you, I have no money on me. So you can stop, you know, pointing your toy gun in my face. And so of course he puts his gun up in the air and shoots it, you know, shoots it once uh, to show me that it's real. So I'm just like, okay, you have a real gun, big deal. So I'm like, okay, wait a minute, let me go to the back. So I go to the back to the trunk and what he didn't realize was that, you know, we threw a birthday party. So there was a 12 inch kitchen knife in the, in the back for cutting the birthday cake. And so as soon as I popped the trunk, I grabbed it. And being a line cook and having Popeye forearms, once I grab that, you're not gonna get it out of my hand. So of course he's like, oh shoot. And he starts trying to wrestle it out of my hand, which of course, you know, this person obviously wasn't thinking because he has a gun, he could have shot me at any time, but he didn't. And um, so, Again, it's kind of like, you know, you bring a dom to a gunfight, what's going to happen? <laughs> the guy on the other side that had gone to the, the driver was wondering what was going on, what the commotion was about, turned around to look and saw that I had a knife that I wouldn't let go of. And he was just like, oh, shit, let's get out of here. So he threw me to the ground and they both ran to the car and started driving off. And of course, at that point, I, you know, beyond livid, I ran over to the middle of the street and I looked right at the car and I threw the knife and I threw the knife and it wedged right between the windshield and the, and the trunk. And, and that was the end of that. And then the cops came and they looked like they could not be bothered that night. They had carjackings going on. And like the last thing they wanted to do was uh, take care of me. And of, of course, because we were coming out of a strip club, um, they just, assume like, you know, whatever they assumed. Yeah. And um, at the hospital too. At the hospital, yeah, the hospital, they didn't necessarily want to treat me for anything uh, based on the way I was dressed. Um, you know, of course I was, I had a concussion and then my cheeks were bulging from being pistol whipped on both sides. And uh, no, they weren't interested in giving me any painkillers or anything. They were just like, you go home and take some Tylenol and you'll be okay. So. Everybody, there are doctors and nurses and healthcare workers out there who are in the King community. Mm -hmm. Please, this is just a reminder, a gentle reminder. Be nice. If someone walks in the emergency room dressed in latex, have some sympathy for them. Do not toss them away. It's very important. I must get this message out. Very near and dear to my heart. True, true. <laughs> I have met some of the healthcare workers who are kinksters, and they're, they're awesome. all really kind. They're wonderful people. It's wonderful. always good to have a healthcare worker you know, around, you know, especially like in a dungeon where we are right now. Yeah. We are in the magnificent, the legendary Mischief Manor. Right? She laughs, there she is. All right, all right. Can, I set, can I describe the scene where we are sure, off right camera? Now. All right, so we are sitting, we had a, a lovely evening, right? We went, to, we went out to dinner, I'm not gonna say where. We went out to a lovely restaurant. You keep things private, you know, <laughs> we went to a lovely restaurant there. Um, um, shout out names of all the people. Shout your name out. So let you know that Mr. Shari, Sunshine, Sunshine, Dave, Dave. Yes, and um, we have Peyton. He's here. He didn't go out to. He didn't go out to dinner. He, why didn't he go out to dinner with us? He was working. He was working, but he's not in this podcast right now. He can't. He's busy. He can't because he's wearing a humbler and in a puppy crate. Yes, I see him. Bro. Yes. Oh. So yes, as we are filming this. He thought, I, he thought I was managing for like a week and a half and never bothered to ask me, so. 
oh, and I wasn't mad. So well, this will remind him next time they ask me. He oh. is humbled. Yes, he is. <laughs> time for punishment. So like, I, I love, I'm so fascinated with how people get together. I want to talk about how you two got together, right? But a lot Dave, of it stems yeah. from here. So I yeah. met you here at the Manor Party. Yeah. Um, you know, so how did you find out about this place? And how, how would you well, describe this, this place? This place, I've always been wanting to come to this place because I actually met uh, Miss Shari years ago when she taught at uh, Test Fest. And you were only just starting to put yes. this place together. Mm -hmm. And I remember I after your class, I came right up to you and asked you for your card because I wanted to see this place. Right, yeah, you, you absolutely did. And, uh, and of course, because, you know, being in Manhattan, everywhere else just seems too far away. So, um, yeah, I, I kind of lost touch. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, okay. And then um, this previous Tess Fest, and I'm going to put a shout out to Tess, the Ulan Spiegel Society, because you should really join as a member because it's an awesome, awesome work. Um, I went to Tess Fest last year, and um, there was someone stalking me. Um, actually, he wasn't stalking me. Dave was kind of stalking uh, Jason, my my other submissive, and actually I was finishing up play and I walked over and I saw Jason was talking to the stalker, Dave. And so I was wondering what's going on. And um, so the way Dave inserted himself into my life was to talk about something that I really enjoy, which is um, these tool bags. Um, which one did I have on me? Craft. That I had a craftsman bag that's how I keep all of my my play equipment is in the craftsman bags because they have really cool pockets um, and they're really sturdy so you can uh, bring them to events and stuff and and so they were having that conversation so of course I had to in interrupt and find out what was going on um, but that's how we met and then Dave mentioned how you know would you be interested in going to one of uh, uh, Mr. Shari's events and I said yes of course I've been dying to go there so. Um, that's how it all came about. Yeah. That's inspiring. Yeah. It's wonderful. I love seeing, it's you know, good. people together like that. He's not fable in the making. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a, a question that's been kind of haunting my mind. I've been talking to a lot of people. Some people get burned out. You know, uh, but there's a lot to take in the King community. There's a lot of people. Yeah. There's a lot of anxiety. It's worth it. You know, people, that's why people do it. But people sometimes get burnt out. Was there ever a time where you were going to quit? And obviously it didn't, but what changed your mind? Absolutely. All the time. And I don't even know if it's called being burnt out as much as being just completely disenchanted um, and, and losing hope because I kind of feel like um, a lot of things that end up triggering people to, to give up on the lifestyle is when um, certain things are broken, like uh, a consent violation happens and uh, you don't feel like uh, you're where you belong. I mean, once a, you realize you're in a community that you love and embrace, all of a sudden um, is no longer a place that's safe because of a consent violation, um, it, it makes you want to hide or, or run. Um, sometimes you don't feel like you have the community behind you um, when something like this happens. So um, this again is something that, you know, I truly want to work on um, in terms of, you know, being a part of the community and building the community is to um, help people find those kinds of resources and also help them understand that they need to develop um, a, a circle of support and how to, how to create those circles of support. Uh, and the different kinds of organizations that can help you um, when you need to report uh, a violation. Um, another thing oh. that, I'm sorry. No, no, and Another ahead. thing that keeps me from burning out, I think, is um, my, my mentees, um, which is something I never really wanted to do, um, only because I have such poor communication skills. But um, I have two mentees, uh, Nick's and Sirius, and... I love them to death because they really teach me a lot. Uh, they, for some reason, they think I teach them stuff, but they have no idea that like the secret is actually that they're 
they're teaching me so much more. Um, and they're growing and they're thriving and they can do that all on their own. They don't need me for that. <laughs> but if they, they, they constantly give me credit for it, but it's, it's not me, it's them. And I love watching them thrive. Um, and they help, they help me grow because, um, uh, you know, they help bring up questions that I actually have to think about myself in terms of, you know, what, what is it that I want for myself as opposed to, you know, not only what they want, but what do I want? All right. Sissification, dirty sluts or sissy maids sissy. or classic maids or dirty sluts. Uh, sissy maids. Um, what is, these are the fun questions. Yes. Why pegging? Why are men so obsessed with their own assholes? Well, because they they have right. no other hole to stick their finger in. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Um, chastity. Yeah. Silicone, plastic, or metal? Oh, plastic. I want to be able to see everything, especially when it gets all stuffed in there and engorged and turning purple. And that reminds me, everybody. YKF. Go to lockedinlust.com. You get 15% off at YKF. Use the code YKF. 15% off. Get chastity. Let's talk about chastity. You go to yes. Locked in Lust. You, use y, you get 15% off. But um, do you have anybody in chastity right now? Uh, I have a key. I don't believe he is wearing it. Although it would be nice if he heard this and decided to put it on. Because uh, that would be a nice tribute. How long? Was the longest you've had someone in chastity for? Uh, 32 days. 32 days. What is the worst? <laughs> no, what is the most pathetic thing they've ever said? Someone has said to you, like, please let me out. I'll, I'll mow your, I'll do your taxes. Yeah, there's, I'll... <laughs> there's always, there's always a lot of groveling. And then I'll take care of your disabled aunt. <laughs> right. I mean, it's it's interesting because there's all there's all these stages, like you know, the, like the denial stage where oh, it doesn't really hurt, I don't really mind it, and then it gets to the point where they're just like, I I can't handle this anymore, and then they get angry, uh, and then once they start turning on you, that's when you really get to punish them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, when it comes to scissification, scissification and chastity goes together mm -hmm. many times throughout the years. My view of scissification has changed. And evolved you know it started out as just like oh turn on but then there's there's the gender issue there's the question there's the the social aspect there's the you know is it good for womanhood the the fetish is it negative for it you know does it ask all these questions have your view of sissification forced feminization has that changed or evolved throughout the years through your, throughout your experience um i'm definitely more sensitive to I think the idea when I knew about it and understood it um, in the pro dom dungeons was okay. So someone wants to come in and put on a dress and some makeup, um, and it was so transactional that I didn't even understand the whole concept. Now it's really more about understanding the person, the individual, and understanding what it is that is their fetish because it isn't. It might not necessarily be at all about putting on the makeup and the wig and the dress and and the heels and everything else as much as just being treated and spoken to uh, differently. So instead of generalizing what it means, it's so important to actually um, sit down and have those hard conversations uh, with your play partner about what it is exactly that they, they're looking for. What is the most brutal thing you've ever seen someone do to someone's balls? That I can I the one that I did? The the one that I did was As I look at pain and I'm worried. Okay, well maybe pain wants to try it. I don't know. Um I did this I did this to to thrash when we used to do a uh, video for uh K's for Kink. And um he was he was totally naked and uh on the floor i'd scattered a whole ton of uh raw rice um and then i clipped you know those uh those clips that you have that have a magnet on it that you can hang on your refrigerator but yes. you can still use it as a clip you know for your shopping list or something 
Well, I clipped those onto his balls and I clipped some onto his nipples too. And then I threw a whole ton of metal uh, thumbtacks with the rest of the rice on the floor. And I made him crawl so that he had to use the magnet on his balls and the magnets on his nipples to pick up all of the uh, thumbtacks. Because if he didn't, then on his way crawling to me, he would be pretty much getting his hands all bloody. That was really fun. Yeah. I enjoy it. Sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah. I should try that again. Okay. I need some advice. All right. I'm locked in chastity right now, right? And my heel is right there. Okay. So for the people watching, yeah. what are some great ways to tease someone who's in chastity? Oh, so where should I start? How about the beginning? Uh well you first you, you would first want to like pour as much uh silicone lube in there as possible just so that you can get it all squishy and mushy and stuff because things are going to start getting bigger and tighter and stuff in there. So I would do that first. Uh, I would definitely take out the, the Hitachi magic wand, do a little bit of vibrating stuff. Um, and then once they think that that sensation is too much, then I might want to go into something more like, I don't know, making some wasabi cream or something. Oh. Um, yeah either wasabi cream or uh, Vicks Vapor Rub, which Dr. is really Dr. cool. But Sushi. you definitely want to um, you want to dilute that. You don't want to use the Vicks Vapor Rub straight because the, cause you, don't, you don't want the game to be over. You want to just keep it going for as long as possible. So uh, definitely dilute that. So you might want to use a little bit of that in there. Um, definitely dilute the wasabi. Yeah, um, you should dilute the wasabi. Okay. The, the King community is filled with dreamers. You know, um, I my imagination just runs wild, yeah. and maybe one out of the ten dreams I have slightly come true. But just we're here, we're in the dungeon. Just brainstorm with me. What what is your ultimate kinky fantasy? If you had endless resources, you can go anywhere in the world with anybody you want, living or dead. What is your ultimate kinky fantasy? My ultimate kinky fantasy would be to have my own stable. Um. It's horses? <laughs> you can call them horses <laughs> if you want. <laughs> have my own stable. So depending on what I'm feeling like, I could just pull one of them out and um, um, have my way. Uh, definitely a lot of land. I like those little cool maze, like those those uh, bushes that are shaped into a maze. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, like the shining. Yeah, I like the shining. <laughs> definitely do some sort of... Uh, <laughs> Seek and destroy kind of play. Um, what else? I would definitely uh, maybe have like a padded room. <laughs> oh yeah, I used to have fan when I was young. I used to have fantasies of padded rooms, straight jackets. I used to make yeah. straight jackets out of like raincoats and pretend I was in a padded room. Yeah, That's so cool. <laughs> I know it does explain a lot, right? <laughs> Charge out there. Yeah, explain so much. <laughs> It really does. <laughs> All right. Uh, rapid fire recommendations. They don't have to be kink related. Okay. All right. Recommend a film. Uh, geez, what did I see recently that was good? Uh, I, I liked Kung Fu Panda. Boy. Oh, nice. Yeah. That black, he brings it. Right. <laughs> yes. Jack Black. What? The Kung Fu Panda? Yeah. Oh, maybe. Okay. Recommend a book. Uh, a book? These All right. Books. Oh no, those are CDs. Oh, books. Oh, these are books. These oh, are these books. are books. These are these are awesome books. This is uh You're in them. This yes, this I'm in this one. This one is uh from Gary Breckheimer. It's called The Naked City. Uh this is one of those crazy photo shoots where I had to show up at like five in the morning. Um and just shoot all over New York City naked, which was fun. Um and this one was also uh for the gallery show flesh in the elements um and that one definitely a lot of crawling uh, yes i did get a lot of splinters when that shoot was happening at the lumber yard um the fun part about all these shoots is that um you get to meet a lot of construction workers and and they're very cooperative for some reason i guess you know they enjoy having naked women running around their work site um but that was a lot of fun i enjoyed that yeah Okay. 
had to get a job in construction. It's uh, <laughs> fun. Um, all right. Oh, wait, we still have the, the rapid fire. Uh, recommend a song. You know what? I really love from Silence of the Lambs when they start playing um, Goodbye Horses. Oh, yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. For some reason, I've been really... Yeah. Isn't it wonderful when he's putting on his, um, his, his cape that's made of human skin? Yeah, Buffalo Bob. It's, it's, it's Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill. Yes, um, but I, yeah, I think for for now, that's kind of my go-to song when when I'm uh, beating somebody is uh, Goodbye Horses. The look on oh. Shari's face. Mr. Shari, Shari, Mr. Shari hates hard movies. Oh, yeah, I can't watch. Oh, oh I'm not but I've seen Silence of the Lambs, so I know. But isn't that a great, great song? song? No, that's also yeah, a great it, song. Not my go-to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, recommend a television show. Um, a television show? Wow. Um, I just finished watching uh The Brother's Son. Oh on Netflix. That was fun. Good. I mean, I, I really like those mindless violent shows because it's mindless and it's violent, so my favorite. <laughs> oh yeah. There's yeah. no this the BDSM and mindless violence go hand in hand. I think <laughs> that's a great time. <laughs> I mean, they get in a role play scenario, in a safe, consensual role play scenario. Right. It, it, mindful, 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 perfect. Oh, mindful Thank you. violence. Thank okay. you very much. Mindful okay. violence. Okay. That's mindful very violence. beautiful. See, this is an educational. Show. Namaste. <laughs> so, all right. Um, oh, finally, this is this is a question I've been dying to ask you. Yeah. You, you are a chef. <laughs> Recommend a meal. Yes. Uh, recommend a meal it depends what you want if you want like something that's like hoity-toity french or if you want something italian um i mean when i was during my heyday as a line cook it was it was bad because that was during a time when like it was okay to be sexually harassed and it was okay to be mean and nasty and also um totally coked up and stuff um so back then like there's a lot of coke in the kitchen yeah, um, a lot of the culture has changed, which I'm kind of happy about. But you know, still, so, there are still a lot of things that are still the same. Um, you know, I, I I still don't think that women are are really promoted as much as they should be. But um, I would say, if you want like really good pizza, um, go to Wiley Dufresne's Pizza Place because he's awesome. He has created all kinds of really cool restaurants, and this is his newest one. So I would definitely recommend that place. Right, we're going to play a little game, and it's called Underrated Overrated. Okay. Okay, I'm going to say a kink or a fetish. And you just say simply if it's underrated or overrated, but you have to say why you think it's overrated or underrated. Okay. In a sentence or two. Okay. All right. Feel free to add to this game. Let's start. Um, garter belts. Oh, overrated. Overrated. Okay. Why? No, oh, it's just, it's just a piece of elastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, two inches on. I think. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So, um, spike chassis devices. Uh definitely underrated. Okay. Regular chassis devices. Yeah, overrated. Overrated. Yeah, because it's like it, it shouldn't be protected. It should be tortured. That's what it's for. <laughs> it should be tortured and mangled. So you prefer the spike chastity? Oh, right? absolutely. Of course. The okay. more, the merrier. I should have known. More spikes. I, that's stupid. The sharper, the better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else we got? We have French made outfits. Uh, yeah, they're underrated. I feel like they're they're really nice. Um, I I would want to say though that that people who wear them really should also learn more about the training to be in it. Oh. It's a, I think it's a privilege to wear a French frilly made outfit. So you need to be able to uh, um, walk the walk. Well said, definitely well said. Strap on dildos. Yeah. <laughs> you want to strap it onto the boot? You want to strap it onto I know, the just thigh? In general. Do you want 
Uh, yeah, strap ons are great. Yeah. Right. So they're underrated? Underrated. Underrated. Okay. Legos. <laughs> oh. Legos. Legos is my, yeah, Legos is my thing. I love Legos. Please tell um, us why you love Legos. I, I love Legos because. <laughs> If you've ever stepped on a Lego, it's awesome to see how much pain that person is in when they step on a Lego. So can you imagine if you actually laid out, you know, the entire floor with Legos and then you got to trample somebody on it. So that's actually what uh, Dave and I do when we go to some parties is um, he, lays on, he lays on a bed of Legos and I get to step on him and... Um, his back looks beautiful afterwards. You can actually try and fit the pieces back into yeah. the indentations. It's pretty awesome. We can make a Dave house. Yeah. <laughs> a Dave log cabin. A Dave log cabin. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Um, scarification. Uh, I Yeah, I can't handle that. So that's uh, overrated. Right. Yeah. Bloshing. Splashing. It's just my for. It's just my thing. Um, yeah, it's kind of overrated. Okay. Uh, and keep my everybody, we, we are not king shaming. Everybody's no, not at all. Yeah, no. Not we I just don't like mess. Yeah. Some people just don't like cleaning up mess. <laughs> no, that's some people true. love it. It's awesome. Uh, we have two friends that come to the matter. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Love oh, it. you know, I know you know. Absolutely love Wonderful. it. Wonderful. They're, they're, they're just awesome. not allowed to do it here. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's messy and I, it's I messy. yeah I can understand like messy being a thing and sugar attracts bugs yeah what about consensual non consensual uh yeah that's awesome that's definitely underrated um just do it with the right person I mean make sure you you really plan it out that you really really trust the person if you're gonna do that so fire play. Uh, yeah, it's beautiful, and I know a lot of people who do fire play. Uh, it's definitely not my thing, but um, yeah, it's underrated. I think more people should do it because uh, then they learn more about safety. And uh, I'm all about safety, so uh, the more people who play safe, the better. Pup play. Pup play is underrated. I didn't realize how much fun it was until I went to Shari's... Uh, pet play event and it's absolutely adorable i didn't think i mean i i love puppies yeah. i have to admit mr shari yeah. you rocked it party. an amazing party legendary yeah. party to be talked about for I, I also i'm a little convinced because there was a full moon that night <sighs> and we had a pet play party so I planned the next one specifically when my party hits on the next full moon. Full moon so pet play party. So that same, hoping for that same vibe, because just just playing our version of Simon Says, which we called Handler Says, mm -hmm. that was so much fun to watch. Yeah. And so easy, like, and everybody had such a good time even watching all the pups play that. Yeah. That. That alone, I think, was just reason to do it again. It like, was it just really was a, it was a, a really nice group event, and you don't get them very often in King. It was beautiful. Yeah, the vibe. Yeah. Not only yeah. Not only that, but like it, it was cinematic in a way. Mm -hmm. it, I felt like I was in a Wes Anderson film or there's a Stanley Kubrick film. Like it was a big semicircle. Mm -hmm. There was the handlers, and then there were the pups and the people watching. And, and, and they were taking it seriously. And they were like they were jumping so over obedient. each other, leaping. Yes. They, they were. were what was the word you looked? You, you used the ver not the feral. Um, it's, it's the word. It's, feral. No. Primal. 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 But, but also just like very acrobatic. Yeah, they were like, very wow. Well, they were young yeah, pups. They were, yeah, yeah. they were some young pups. I was like, young yeah. 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 They, yeah. They, they really behaved like puppies, and and it, and they, they part of and I don't mean to intrude on the whole, but part of the one of the things about pup play is that when you get to wear a mask, mm -hmm. it then I think makes it very easy for you to step into your role. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because you have the cover of that mask. And it actually makes the person wearing the mask really get into their character, and so it becomes enjoyment for everybody. And then it becomes it just becomes believable. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Like so, there were a bunch of them in masks, and I think it made all the difference yeah. for them. Do you yeah. enjoy masks, and, and especially like because you love latex, mm -hmm. right? And there's a big thing with when you put on a latex mask, you're it's like 
it's all, it kind of feels like when I have a pro when I feel like I'm not human anymore almost. You know, in a good way. <laughs> you know? you kind of morph into it. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. an escape. It's a really nice escape. Yeah. So for those people who want to get into latex, who have no experience at all, who like have no nothing, mm -hmm. what, would you, what advice would you give? I would recommend that they go to the uh, latex class that's being held on, oh my God, May, April, Dave, April 20. Date forthcoming. Date. So there's a wonderful, wonderful latex designer oh, yes. in New York named Renee Masumian. And in fact, I just visited her. And uh, she will be coming to teach a class on latex 101, the fetish and apparel, and why it's so amazing and why there, it's such a big fetish. Um, and it's going to be happening on April 25th. Uh, through tests. So if you go to FetLife and uh, look up events, um, you will find it. Uh, and we that have, will be exciting. We have some questions. Um, first of all, Sunshine says, I love how sadistic you are. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Petey says, do you own any personal slaves, goddess? If you do, what are the tasks and rituals they have to perform? <laughs> well, I, I do have... Um, I, I do have a primary one, um, and in fact, it goes by Narcissus Jason. Um, so Jason pretty much is, um, he, uh, what do they call that? Anticipatory service. So he's gotten to the point, we've been together for about seven years now, um, where he really does understand um, all of his responsibilities based on anticipating what it is my needs are. Um, and, and that takes a while to develop. You know, you really want to um, establish something steady with somebody where they get to see you interact and, and understand all the different parts of, you know, your own nuances. Um, and Jason kind of has that, you know, to the point where he knows when my nose is going to start running and has a tissue ready. Um, uh, you know, services include, you know, coffee service, um, laundry service. Um, I think my favorite and what everyone else gets to see is that um, he is my personal DM. He is my own personal dungeon monitor. So when I am playing, let's say when and when I'm whipping Dave, um, Jason is there and he knows intuitively what instruments or implements I'm going to use next. He cleans the, the play area for me. Um, he gets everything all set up. And uh, he protects the space around me so that um, when I'm using the single tail whip, people walking by aren't going to get hit by the whip, even though I want them to, but it doesn't happen. Um, he protects the, the people who attend the party as well as he, he protects uh, my play space during my scene. So um, yeah, he's a personal DM, which I think is a wonderful service. I do want to ask a serious question before we get silly. Okay. <laughs> Um, the, the Asian fetish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's, there's benefits to it and stuff like that, but there's also am downsides. I, am I Asian? Um, are you? Yes. And you told me you were. Yeah, I am. I took your word for it. I am. Okay. Good. I trusted you. <laughs> we were talking about China and yes. all that stuff, and um, so so what? First of all. What have you dealt with when it comes to racism um, in the BDSM community when it comes to that? Because you also have the people who are like, well, do like, oh, you're an, you know, like, they have, they have the fetish for it, but then there's also straight up racism and hate and ignorance. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I definitely see that. Um, how do you deal with it? How do I deal with it is, you know, I, I try and reach out. Well, in the beginning, I used to, I used to carry so much shame that if I saw another Asian person at an event, I couldn't even talk to them. I mm. would barely even make co eye contact with them because of my own personal shame. Like, oh my God, they're Asian, which means they must think all the things that my parents think about, you know, things that aren't traditional. Oh, like I must be such a horrible person because I'm not a doctor or a lawyer and, you know, married with kids and living in the suburbs. But when I would encounter other Asians at, at kink parties, 
I would be thoroughly ashamed and try and avoid them as much as mm. possible. Um, now, um, it's actually kind of different because now I'm, you know, after being confronted by uh, Leather Redux, which is my, my lovely sister in Chicago, and just talking to her about the shame, I've come to realize that, you know what, I, I'm not really helping anybody. Um, and I'm not helping myself. And so now I'm actually trying to reach out to uh, the Asian community and you know, we need each other. We, we definitely need each other and we need to hear each other's truths. And um, <laughs> something else that I'm going to be pitching to is um, I'm actually going to be running a panel in May uh, for the uh, AANHPI Heritage Month, Asian American Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander Heritage Month, a, uh, a, a round table. So we will have different uh, AANHPI leaders and members of the community um, talking about some of the stuff that really affects us. You know, what, what are our obstacles? Are they the obstacles that are within us or are they the obstacles that are within the community? So um, yeah, this is another thing that I'm also doing. I think I'm doing a lot of shit. Good, That's <laughs> wonderful. Thank you for doing everything you're doing. You are an amazing, you're Thank an you amazing. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Love it. We got some questions. Let's get back to fun stuff. Uh, Stan Vladimir. Um, oh, so spanking out of Legos, kinky werewolf. Kinky, kinky werewolves at Mischief Manor. Oh, yes, with the, with the full moon. Yes. What is the most humiliating thing you've done to a slave, goddess? What is the most humiliating thing I have done to a slave? Yes, so like in, just off the top of your head. Um, you think of something the most humiliating. I guess it would be uh, ass to mouth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll do it. Oh. <laughs> Dan says, which actor or actress would you like to have as a sub or, or as a Dom partner? Uh, an actor that I would like to have as a sub. Um, let me think. I don't know. Maybe like someone like, a, like a, what's his name? Thor. The, oh, one of the is, Hemsworth. Uh, Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth, yeah. yeah. You like would, to have him on his hands and knees? I'll Chris Pine. Oh, yeah. That, oh, so, yeah. okay. So um, Chris Hemworth, Chris Pine, if you guys are listening, we're in New Jersey, right? And it, I think you have a good time. You should you know, reach out. Give me a call. We should do a Jason remote. Yeah, Jason. Oh, Throw nice. Jason. Yeah, bring yeah. Jason. Yeah. And, you know. May 9th is the AANHPI panel. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so Jason Momoa, you're yes. cordially invited. Yes, please come. Come on. Have some uh, yeah. yes. So much surface area for me to damage, too. So, yeah. <laughs> I, would be, I would be thrilled. <laughs> Might take two of us. Yes, okay. I'll share. This time I'll share. Thank you. <laughs> Stan has the question. Oh, wait, here. Um, okay. Since you worked as a chef, Goddess Narcissa, mm -hmm. have you had a session where you make your sub prepare a meal for you and follow the recipe 100% exactly you were, the way you wrote it down? <laughs> um, I don't know if I could do that because. I am such a control freak. I'm pretty sure they would fail. But then again, maybe that would be a good yeah, thing if right? they fail. Because, yeah, then there would be a whole lot of punishments ahead. So uh, we were talking about we were talking about the, the cruelty of chefs. Yes. And the, in, the, in the DS kind of relationship and how it mimics. There's, there's, what are some cruel things, some of the cruelest things that some, maybe said to you or that you've heard that you could use? To say to somebody else at a session oh god well that that was the thing that that happened a lot was you know when i first started i was nobody and of course i didn't go to culinary school i went to the school of hard knocks so i walked in and they pretty much made bets as to how long i was going to stay um by giving me the worst things to do so um the worst thing to do was gut fish so i gutted fish like 10 12 hours a day every day um and I just kept asking for more because uh, I wasn't going to stop. So, you know, this was a, a typical, like, traditional French restaurant. And um, most of the time I got I got cursed at in French. So I, I most of my French is curse words. I don't really, <laughs> I, can't, laws. I don't know conversational French. I only know curse words. Curse but, yes, yeah, cursive French. 
and uh, it's vicious, you know. Um, it was definitely a, a, a boys club and being a, a woman that's only five foot two, um, it was hard because I didn't want to be one of the boys. I wanted to be better than the boys. So um, yeah, I really had to work my ass off. And a lot of the times it was hard because physically I needed to make sure I was able to carry the 80 pound bag of flour up this from the basement. Um, and now we have the stand question. And the stand question. The stand question is, if you could have any superpower, what would it be and how would you use it in your sessions oh, or in your king's life? My superpowers? My superpowers would be, um, I, I would really like the superpower of being able to read somebody's mind because I feel like uh, then I would have a really good idea whether or not they really are at their limit or if they're lying to me. <laughs> I would love to just push them one hair beyond their limit uh, because it is edge play, is it not? So if there was a way that I could read someone's mind and know how far I could push them, that would be awesome. We're wrapping it up, but... Um... I, I like to keep the vibe of this very positive. So yeah. um, I think King saved my life in m so many ways, countless ways. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Absolutely. How, I, would you, how, did, how would it save yours? I didn't, I don't think I knew, I only knew about 50% of who I was um, before I started the lifestyle um, because the other 50% I was living someone else's life. The expectations of my family, the expectations of my husband at the time. And um, it wasn't until I got into kink that I really started to realize who I am and also what I want to be. And um, it's been really positive. I'm really happy. And one thing um, I always kind of say that like kinky people should help each other out. Mm -hmm. And one thing is platforms spreading you know, the word and talking on platforms, but we're getting kicked off. They're coming for us, people. They are. You think I'm being all over dramatic. I'm not. They are coming for us. We're getting, people are getting kicked off of platforms, being deplatformed. Oh. Um, X, X, X was Twitter, you know. Um, yeah. MySpace, uh, TikTok is going to be banned maybe or whatever. Well, who knows? So there's always there's always another party to go to. There's always another platform to go to. So yeah. how can we keep in touch? What are some ways kinky people can kind of just keep the word? Yeah. Because we can't rely on Fet Life forever. I know. Well, right now there's a lot going on on Discord. I think um, people are trying to start Discord servers, and that might be a good way to connect. Also, it's it's a matter of um, you know the people that you meet today. You you need to make those connections so that. You know, tomorrow you'll have a way to reach them. Yeah, definitely. And finally, well, we've had a lot of experience with in the world in the kink community. We've seen a lot, you know. Yeah. But the kink rabbit hole goes deep. Where do you, where do you, what are you getting into now that you haven't been into? What's interest piquing your interest? Uh, right now, I would say um, finding out more from the community. I think learning more. Um, I'm, I'm attending more classes as opposed to teaching because I I need to uh, I need to upgrade myself. Yeah, I think look at it this way: um, you have the, the the greatest attitude when it came to you said like you walk into a dungeon, you're like I want to learn. I'll, like, you're you a sub or you're done. You're like I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I, I just want to. I want to learn. Right. And I think it's a great attitude to have because. I mean, sorry, you even said it yourself. You started out as a professionally a sub. To you know, and it, you have an understanding now. You're a better dog because of that. I, I I am. I have. It, this is a very personal thing, but I have a huge difficulty with accepting other doms who have never subbed before. Yeah. Even in a, just one scene, yeah. try it once. Yeah. Just try. It, but I, I meet a lot of, and dare I say, it's mostly men that fall into this category. That was oh, I don't have a submissive bone in my body, and I can't submit to anyone. <laughs> Yet they will wield some very destructive implement yeah. on another human being and not really understand how it feels. Yeah. And so I think it's important that 
if, 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 if Dom, if you, for, you know, decide to set up a team with the Dom and that Dom says to you, oh yeah, I've been someone sub before. I am much more likely to say, you know what? Hey, go ahead. You're going to be safe playing with them. Mm -hmm. than having to ask a million questions of a Dom who has never subbed before, I still wouldn't feel safe. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I feel, I follow the same school of thought. And I always tell people the best Dom's train is subs mm -hmm. because if you don't know, what you're giving someone if you haven't experienced it then um you truly don't know because don't you agree the sub is really who is in control yeah oh yeah yes so as a dominant i have to understand what that really means absolutely mm -hmm. yeah so i have to sub mm-hmm like it just makes sense yeah definitely so we're all we're gonna wrap That's it up fun. we're all on this path <laughs> yeah. together right where do you want this to lead you where do you want this have to take you in the BD in the world of BDSM. In the world of BDSM, just a greater understanding of each other. I think that we're all very quick to uh, to not be kind, um, and it would be nice to see uh, more kindness out there. And that's coming from a brutally sadistic dominatrix. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please support Goddess. Narcissa, support Mischief Manor, support yes. Mr. Shar, support the King community. And how can they support you? They can support you by um, your photographs, your 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 everything you do. Your, yeah. They, how can they get in touch with you? They they can uh, send me a message on Fet Life. Um, they can go to uh, Mercy Whips on Instagram. Um, whips. Go go to Purple Bash. Go to the store and get a whip. Yes. <laughs> and then also go to the classes. Go to the test classes too, because um I'll be there too, and I'll be taking attendance. Now, are you are you taking on any on, on new um, submissives or anything like that? Uh, I I will consider. I will consider. But we were we were talking about this at dinner. Um, the best submissives are what the submissives who kind of show up prepared. Do their knowledge, who know what they yeah. what they want, but know what. Do your homework. Do your homework on the. We, on we the kid when we call someone a stalker, but that's really just somebody doing their due diligence <laughs> to get the most information they can, so that when they show up, they don't look like a schmuck. Yes. <laughs> so, Thank you. Goddess, Goddess Narcissa, Narcissa. How? It's what? Are the, so the best way to get in touch with you is through Fet Life and yes, the websites. Mm -hmm. can, can you say the website again, please? Yeah uh mercywhips.com uh message me on fet life and if you follow me on fet life you'll see the events and classes i go to uh come come to one of the events and say hello we have some final words from alessandro femia a big hug from toronto Aww. stan says hi and then stan says it was a pleasure seeing you thank you alice um uh, and um i don't know that is Data Ian Jan says, oh, getting her whips. Serious? Yep. You're the best, Goddess, and I'm so proud of you. Um, submissive. Uh, yeah, a whole bunch of other <laughs> stuff. Wow. Thank Purple you. Passion NYC yes. from David. Ah, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You so much. It's really fun. Um, yes. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, yourkinkyfriends.com. We have a Patreon. We're going to have a whole, we have, we have a lot of shows and plans and interesting stuff go to locked in lust lock it up chassis devices seriously changed my life <laughs> i'm having a good time subs going right giving me money said 15 percent off there's awesome stuff there uh, but just you know the rule everybody be cool be kind keep an open mind take care <laughs>